Hey everyone, today I have some pretty awesome stuff to share with you. We're going to create interactive pop-up hotspots in PowerPoint, and there's a couple of different approaches to do this. So let's get started and show a demo of what we'll be creating today. On my screen here, this looks like a normal serene setting with a cabin and a mountain, but in reality I have hidden hotspots on this PowerPoint slide. One of the hotspots is on the cabin, and you'll notice my mouse cursor changes when I'm hovering over a hotspot. If I click on this, then I get a text box that appears on the screen. And in order to clear the screen, I press the close button and I can click on various other elements on the slide and it interacts with my actions. Let's look at a different way to put hotspots on the screen. In this case, I have several icons and these icons are clickable. When I click on an icon, it takes me to another screen and I can go back by pressing the back button or the arrow. Now let's take a look behind the scenes and see how I put this together. I'm gonna to start with this slide right here. Now that slide had three different hotspots on the image and you can see the various components and I labeled the elements for hotspot one, hotspot two, and hotspot three, which were the bungalow, the lake, and the mountain. And I have various triggers for elements entering and exiting as well. So I'm gonna delete everything on the screen and start from scratch. I'm going to grab this image from the other slide and I'm going to go to design and I'm just going to make that the background. I'll go ahead and fill that with a picture and I'll fill it with the clipboard and then I don't have to worry about this as an on-screen element. So we'll just focus on the things that we want it to do in terms of hotspots. So to create a hotspot, I'm going to go insert a shape. It can be pretty much any shape. I think a rectangle would be best to work with and I'm going to put a hotspot over this bungalow. So I'm going to start by drawing a rectangle. I'm going to remove the outline. And the fill, I'm just going to make it a white box. I'll format the shape and bump up the transparency to something maybe 30, 40%. That's not going to be the final state. That's just so that I can see what's behind it. Double click, and I'm going to edit points. Editing the points of the shape allows me to change the shape, modify it slightly. So I can, instead of having a rectangle, I can modify it. I'm going to right click on part of the line and I'm going to add a point. I'm just going to stretch this so that it generally covers the shape of the bungalow. So this is a pretty easy shape to get. I'm going to format the shape and bump up the transparency now to 99. So it's there, but you mostly can't see that it's there. And now this will be this, the hot spots for the bungalow. And I'm going to go to the selection pane. If you don't see the selection pane, go to home in the editing section, hit select and make sure the selection pane is selected. And then I can see all of the elements on the screen. And I move the picture to a background of the slide. So it's not an actual image at this point. And so I'm going to put this as the bungalow hotspot. Labeling is going to be important and being able to hide and unhide elements on the screen is going to be important because this will get a little bit complex. It'll be a little bit convoluted, but it's something that you can manage. Now I'm going to create the elements of the screen that pops up. I'll start with a rectangle. I'm going to fit this over the entire slide. In the formatting, I'm going to remove the outline and for the shape fill, I'm going to put it as white and I'm going to bump up the transparency a bit. This is the background, so it's gonna fade everything out. I think uh, maybe 34% might be good. Now I'm gonna duplicate this slide, but this one will be a bit smaller. This is where the actual text is going to appear on the screen. And this one, I'm going to bump down the transparency to nothing. I'll go ahead and align this center and middle. We might have to change this afterwards, we'll see. Now I'm going to insert a text box within the slide, and this will be the, the bungalow hotspot. A quick trick, if you want to add some filler text, you can hit equals lorem, and if I want perhaps three paragraphs, or two paragraphs and two sentences for each paragraph, then I can hit enter, and maybe I want a little bit more. I'm gonna put uh, two more paragraphs. Delete some of this. This is only for the fur purpose of filler text and then I can format this somewhere. Uh, now I have my text box that's going to pop up on the screen, but I need a way to close it. So I'm going to go to insert and shapes. I'm gonna to go to the equation shapes and hit this multiplication. 
as I hold shift, then I can make the dimensions equal. I'm going to modify this slightly, maybe shrink it down a little bit, change it to a gray. Now this is going to be so that I can close the box down um, and I can hyperlink this shape. A trick that I'm going to do is I'm going to put in one more rectangle and this time again I'm going to say no outline the shape fill is going to be white I'm going to bump up the transparency to 99 now I have a box that sits over the X and the reason why is I don't care so much about accuracy I want people to generally click on the X area and so that's going to be my hotspot it's going to be my trigger to return back to the main menu and so at this point I have my elements and I'm going to go ahead and rename them so I'm going to put Hotspot one, you can name these however you want, and I'll name that Hotspot one background. This one I will name Hotspot, Hotspot one box, Hotspot one text box, Hotspot one close icon, and this last one, this rectangle here, I'm going to name this Hotspot one close. And that just tells me what all of these elements are. So I have all of these elements that I'm going to highlight by holding control and clicking on them. I'm going to hop over to the animation pane. How do I want these to appear? I'll go ahead and add an animation. I'm just going to do fade. We can do something a little bit fancy that might be for another video. And I want to see the animation pane. Now I want these to play. These are all highlighted. Right now they, they'll play on mouse click. I want to change this to add a trigger and I'm going to say when they click on the bungalow hotspot which is that first rectangle that I shaped over the bungalow so now when they click on the hotspot then those will trigger. I'm going to click on all of these again not the hotspot but all of the elements. I'm going to add one more animation and that animation is that they're going to exit the screen. They're going to fade out and they're going to fade out when I click on the box that covers the X right there. And so that would be the hotspot close, hotspot one close. So when they click on this box that is actually invisible, but it's not 100% invisible, it's 99% invisible. And I should explain why I do that. I put it at 99% because I don't want people to actually see a box. I want them to click on either the bungalow or the X. And if I were to choose 100% transparent, then there actually would be no box there, nothing for them to click on. But at 99%, it looks invisible, so they don't think that they're clicking on a box, they think they're clicking underneath it, when in reality it is sitting on top. And so that's why I do that. Now one thing you'll want to do also is go to slideshow, set up the slideshow, and for the show type you'll want to click browsed at kiosk, full screen. And that means that the mouse buttons and the forward and backward arrows on the keyboard won't jump to the next slide. That it enforces them that they have to click on the slide, on the elements. And so let's preview this at this point and see what we have. Right now we have one hotspot, it's over the bungalow, and you'll notice my mouse changes as I hover over the bungalow. It changes to a, a hand with a pointer finger. When I click on that, then this box appears. And I can click elsewhere, I can click on the keyboard to advance the slide, and since I have it set to kiosk mode, the only thing they can do is look for an interaction on the slide. And there's a close button, when they click on the close button, then it returns them back here. Now I'm going to go ahead and hide everything so we see the background slide again, the, the image, and we're going to fast forward a bit. I'm going to make another hotspot for the mountains and for the lake right here. And maybe I'll make the mountains, maybe I'll make a hotspot that encompasses the entire mountain range. And this will be in fast forward motion, so you'll be able to see my work at a rapid pace. But I'm essentially going to be doing exactly the same thing that I did for the bungalow. I'm just going to replicate it a few times. Okay, now I have everything set up. I want to walk you through what you're seeing. In the selection pane, now I have hot spots on the slide. I have a hot box, hot spot that is over the bungalow. It's shaped like the bungalow. I have another hot spot that's over the mountains that I shaped to be the shape of the mountains. 
and then I have another hot spot that is over the lake. And you don't see these because they're set to 99 transparency, which is essentially saying that they're 100% transparent. They exist, but you just really don't see them. Now I have various elements. I have um, a hot spot background that kind of blurs. It doesn't blur everything. I could make it so that it blurs the background out. I just have it set to opaque so that you focus on the actual box. Here's the element that is the box. I have a text box within there. Now I could animate all of these elements so that they appear more creatively on the slide. For now, I'm just having them all fade in together. But another thing would be to maybe have this fly in from the right. That would be interesting. I have a close icon right here which is just aesthetics. It's just so that people have somewhere to click, but what they're actually going to be clicking is a close button, which is a transparent, a mostly transparent box that covers the button. So if they click anywhere within this box, they don't have to click exactly on the X in order to close it down. And then I replicated all of these elements for the, the mountain and the lake hotspots. So here's what the background looks like in the box and the text box for the mountains. It's the same thing, you know, between you and me, it's the same thing. I just changed the word mountains from bungalow and lake. And then I have my close icon and then I have the, the actual close box. And you notice the triggers, all of these elements are set to fade in when I click on um, and I have mountain hotspot selected, which is the shape of the mountains. And then they all are set to close on the trigger of clicking on hotspot to close, which is that transparent box. And then I have all of these replicated for hotspot three again, which is the lake. And I, I change the lake and you can see that they are triggered when I click on the lake hotspot and they're triggered to close when I click on the close button here. So I'm going to show all of that. That's what you're looking at in terms of the selection pane for the animation pane. I see all of the elements. Now this is where it gets a little muddled, confused. You have to refer back to the selection pane. When I select on individual items, elements within the selection pane, then you can notice the corresponding animations as well. And that's how you can kind of keep things in order. And you can select on groups. So I have hotspot group to group, and then I can see all of the animations that happen there. And they all happen at the same time. I could animate these so that Perhaps the text box, the, the actual text, the copy appears after everything else and like the, the close icon is the last thing. I would do that by changing the duration and the time that things appear. I'm not gonna do that for this video, but um, so that's what we're looking at right here. And let's take a look at what this interaction looks like in a real environment. I have my mouse. You'll notice the hotspot, the cursor changes to a hand. And so I have one image that is the shape of the mountains. When I go out to the sky and I click on the sky, nothing happens. But when I click on a mountain, then I get the mountain hotspot. And I can click anywhere on here. I can't um, do anything unless I click on the close icon in the corner there. The lake, I can click anywhere on the lake and the lake text box will appear and nothing happens unless I click on the corner there. And then the bungalow is the very last thing. And so that's how I have interactive elements via hotspots. And um, so you can create an image, put an image either as a background or just put an image on the slide and you can make it interactive in that way. Now I want to show you one more thing with you. And that is this concept. Instead of having invisible hotspots on the screen, you have icons in certain elements of the screen and the icons are interactive. So if I click on this, I could put a pop-up box like I did uh, just a moment ago, or in this case, I have these hyperlinks to go to different slides. And here's where I can have a sky slide. And since this is set to kiosk mode, by default, you have to interact with elements. And so I have a back button right here. That'll take me back to this main slide. And I can click on these other icons to have information. And so that's a, another way that you can add interactivity to the slide. And let's take a look at how I did this. This is actually a lot simpler than the other method that I just showed you, but it's just a different approach. This could be perhaps a picture of a brain and you want to emphasize the prefrontal cortex as opposed to the occipital lobe or Broca's area or something, or you could be diagramming parts of an engine and you want these hotspots to appear. What I did for these hotspots is I went to insert you can either insert a shape, any shape would do. In my case, I went to the icons menu and I inserted some of these icons that are like camera aperture icons. 
you can hyperlink any shape you want, perhaps a star. What I did is I created three slides. One is a slide that covers mountains, the other has information on lakes, and the other has information on sky. And these elements are hyperlinked. So first of all, I need to hyperlink to the slide. When they click on a mountain, I want them to hyperlink to the mountain. So I'm going to insert a shape or an icon on my keyboard, press Control or Command K so I can edit the hyperlink. Now, when they click on this, where do I want them to go? I want them to go to a slide and I can choose any slide in my presentation to go to. In this case, since it's a mountain icon, then I want them to go to the mountain slide. So I'm going to select slide three and click OK. For this one here, I'll press Control or Command K, and it's a sky icon, so I want it to go to slide 5, which is the sky slide. And for this last one here, I'll press Control K or Command K, and I want them to go to slide 4, which is my lake slide. Now to format these icons, what I did is I'll double click on it, go to Graphics Format, and here you can change the fill. I use the eyedropper tool and I chose a color. In this case, the mountains are kind of light, so I wanted something dark. So I just chose something, a color that was on the screen so that it stays compatible with what we're seeing on the screen. And then I went in and chose a graphic effect and I put a glow around these things. And I can change the color of the glow if I wanted to. If I hold shift and click on multiple icons, then I can go to graphics format and I can change the glow of all of them at the same time if I wanted to. Perhaps I want to make these green. And also if you click on glow options, then you'll have a pane that gives you more formatting options. If you want to be specific about the color, the size, the transparency, then you can adjust those settings as well. And don't forget that when you create your slides, you need a way for them to go back to the main slide page. In this case, I hyperlinked an image, Control or Command K, and I put them back to slide two. If you want to get more sophisticated with navigation and elements on the screen, then you can see one of our videos where we talk about branching scenarios in PowerPoint and how to storyboard those and set those up. So go explore this new world of hotspots within PowerPoint.